Hey, that's a guy from Ferris Bueller, isn't it? Scotland. One word, infinite possibilities. For damn near 20 years I'd wondered what Scotland would be like. Could it possibly live up to the experience I had spent decades imagining? I was anxious, maybe even a bit nervous, to reconcile the Scotland in my mind with the Scotland now sitting below me. I couldn't shake the feeling I was setting myself up for disappointment. Few things in life are ever truly as good as our grandest expectations. But looking back on it now, it really was that good. Before we could actually hit any shots, I had to address two immediate concerns. Where were our cars, and how does one drive on the opposite side of the road? This is us, big dog. 100%. I, I'm sarcastic a lot. I've always wanted to drive a station wagon. Bud, you ever driven on the other side of the road? <laughs> Never. This is weird. Just try your best. It's all you can do. It's all anyone can do. We got a fourth exit roundabout we got to hit. Yeah, I don't even know where the cars are coming from. Oh my god, I'm terrified. <laughs> but we got to get off that way, right? I think we did it. Oh, we licked it. Armed with a false sense of security, it was off to kill Spindy, our first leg of this wild Scottish adventure. One thing that needs to be addressed right off the bat is the condition of the courses you're going to see this season, specifically how they're all completely browned out. You might think that's a negative due to some idea of golf aesthetics, but in reality, we were thrilled for it. The brown means firm and fast, allowing these courses to play much truer to how they were designed. If anything, I don't think we appreciated how lucky we were. Kill Spindy Golf Club traces its roots all the way back to 1867, when it was the Luffness Golf Club. At the time of registration, it was the 35th oldest club in the world. It became Kill Spindy some two decades later after a quote, non-acrimonious split, end quote, of the membership resulted in two clubs forming from the original one. One club became the Luffness New Golf Club and moved closer to Gullen. The second club renamed itself Kilspindy and remade their course near Craigielaw Farm, where it remains today. First ever round of golf in Scotland. How you handling the nerves? Super nervy. Let's have a trip. Kill Spindy is a charmer of a course. Everything about it is entirely Scottish, from its setting on Aberlady Bay in the Firth of Forth to the quaint clubhouse that sits right next to the 18th green. It's the type of course that Scotland seems to possess in spades, and honestly, America would do well to emulate. Kill Spindy is a par 69 design of Willie Park Jr. and Ben Sayers. It's an extremely welcoming 5,500 yards of relatively flat terrain, ideal for jet lag travelers and anybody looking to stack a second or third round into their day. Like most every Scottish course, don't let the yardages get in your head. It's got more than enough exposure to the wind, humps, bumps, and traditional Scottish pot bunkering to be more than enough challenge for any level of golfer. The most picturesque holes in Kill Spindy's layout are the third, fourth, and eighth holes. The fun in number three at Kill Spindy is the blind tee shot. Otherwise, it's a fairly straightforward par four, playing a touch over 400 yards. But the uncomfortableness on the tee box is a welcome anxiety. In order to pick a good line, you have to climb the observation deck and take in the fairway shape and routing. 
Over the ball, with Aberlady Bay beckoning off the right, it's really easy to say screw it and bail out way left, which is exactly what I did. It's very playable to the left. You'll just be hitting out of the wispy fescue instead of the fairway. It's a great reminder, should you need one, you're not in America. The fourth hole, which plays 365 yards from the metal tees, ranks as the number one handicap mostly because of its fantastic green sight. It features a dollop of a green that rests precariously on a sliver of land jutting out into the bay. There's nowhere to miss, and even with a short iron or wedge in your hand, it showcases why the 5,500 yards on the scorecard is just a number. The eighth hole resides on the far boundary of the property and is a devilish little par three, which can demand all manner of trajectory and shape depending on the wind and hole location. The day we played, the wind was hard off the bay, meaning to get at the right-hand hole location, we'd either have to work a hard fade into a stiff breeze or start a draw out over the beach and hope to God you judged everything correctly. It's an uncomfortable shot, but fun as hell to play. Tron hit one solidly to the middle of the green, a mighty effort on this or any day. It's wild to think how a course like Kilspindy fits into the Scottish golf hierarchy, both in East Lothian and across the island. Even with its charms, playability, and views, to say nothing of the affordability, it probably wouldn't crack a top 50. Yet back home in Florida, over twice the size of Scotland, there isn't a course I've found I'd rather play. A place like Kilspindy really drives home how special the golf is in Scotland. How are you holding up? Good. Hanging in. It's lovely. His first start back from his major medical. Yeah, how many starts does he have to keep his card? He's got eight. Kilspindy is full of incredibly fun shots like this. The tee shot on number nine almost feels like a bite-sized version of the road hole. Both nines open with par threes, something I'd never experienced before or since. The finishing stretch of 15 through 18 is delightful and just the right amount of insane. An old stone wall is in play, there's a drivable par four, and of course the finish is framed by the charming clubhouse and patio. So close you damn near play into somebody's lunch. I can't think of a better introduction to Scottish golf than what Kilspindy provided us. Hey, so happy hey. birthday. Buddy. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Happy birthday, Thank you. Dude. Great playing, Toronto. Yeah. Tired from travel, but with smiles from ear to ear, we went back into Aberlady to set up camp for the night at the Ducks Inn. We were in search of warm beds, a hot meal, and maybe a cold pint or two. We found all those, as well as the Ducks Inn owner, Malcolm Duck. Malcolm Duck is exactly the type of guy you'd hope to meet in a spot like this. Of course, he's extremely professional and hospitable, but he possesses a sharp wit, strong opinions, and more than a hint of rambunctiousness. He's also very passionate about Scotland and Scottish golf, particularly his East Lothian home. I'm not particularly beautifully dressed in my <laughs> non-golf shirt. You look great. No, that is a golf no, shirt. Now. This is not a golf it's a shirt. It's a blade. In Scotland, in the home of golf from Muirfielders, this is a Muppet shirt. Hey, you're speaking of that, which is fine. I love this guy. I should have a proper shirt when we get on the golf. Still, I will put my golf shirt back on. This is a building Ducks Inn, formerly called Kilspindy House. It was built in 1638. No television in this bar, because bars are for talking. Family run, but that doesn't indicate not professional. We try and create memories. Hopefully, most of the good ones. Golf in Scotland, in one sentence, how would you sum it up? Heaven. I mean, it's the home of golf. It's where it all started. So it's in our culture, it's in our DNA. This area here, East Lothian, in Scotland's Gulf Coast, we call it and a little bit of competition to the home of golf, which um, St Andrews call themselves is where golf started. So Edinburgh Leith Links, that's where the first golf um, shots were hit. And Musser with Old Course, that's where the first hole was cut. We enjoy our, our, our American comrades, colleagues, fellows, descendants coming back to see us. It's always good. Malcolm provides guests at the Ducks Inn with tremendous food, cold beer, and good stories. But the highlight of the night may have been his specially crafted putting games, which kept us up way later than we had planned.
proud to present the Doug Jacket. Oh my God. I've waited for this for so long. You I'm never got this far in his dreams. <laughs> I never got this far in my dreams. <laughs> Did you ever think it would come to this? Uh, no, I didn't. I look around and I see all these names on these on the wall and I don't I don't recognize a single one. So I'm not I'm still evaluating what it means uh, to have my name up there on the wall. But uh, uh, I, 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 it's hard to even describe it. A champion crowned and his name forever etched in history on the walls of the Ducks. A big moment for me and my family. Eventually jet lag had overcome us all. And we were ready for a good night's sleep. What's your attitude when you're standing over a short putt? Well, I didn't, I didn't mentally miss enough today. I think that was part of my problem. <laughs> what, explain the mental miss. Like anything inside five feet, you try to mentally miss it as soon as possible, like picturing it. <laughs> So then, like when paint I the picture. paint the picture, so then when I do stand over it, I feel much more at ease, and it kind of gets rid of that gift. So I've already missed it. You might as well get on with it. And sometimes it goes in. But it's like found money. Before we go, one more note about Malcolm. About two months after we got home from Scotland, Solly saw a news story floating around Twitter about a robbery attempt in the small town of Aberlady. And well, we'll let Malcolm tell the story from here. Quiet night in Aberlady last Friday. We were just playing the putting games and one of the guys said they're robbing the store across the road. So I went across and asked him to stop quite loudly. One of the guys threatened with a crowbar, so I advised him he didn't know he was talking to him if he shouldn't do that. And they got in their car. About to drive away, so I just lay on the bonnet to try and stop them, but the car is a bit bigger than a duck and ducks don't like being under car, so I stopped him. So you stopped him? Yeah, 11 years in the Royal Marines, so really never under threat, never in danger. Escape route planned back to the bar in a beer. And there's the local paper. So yeah, so you turn up in the day, stirred up on the front page of the local paper, which is kind of embarrassing, but quite funny. <laughs> Malcolm Duff, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, John. I'd been worried about Scotland failing to live up to my near impossible expectations, yet one round in and I felt at ease. The golf was fun and creative, there was quirkiness to be enjoyed everywhere, and it was all in a postcard setting. This might sound ridiculous, but the only way I can describe it is a feeling of nostalgia, even though I had never been here before. I immediately felt like this was how golf was supposed to be played, how it should be enjoyed. And the best part was that we had more lined up tomorrow. I don't say this lightly, I think this is my favorite golf course in the world. Wow, sound like Zach Blair. Mr. Fowler. Shut up. Chris, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us about the uh, the ecstasy of, of success on the heels of so many failures. Uh, just after knocking on the door for so long, it's just kind of started to ask myself, is this actually going to happen? And the answer I kept telling myself was yes. I don't want to keep you from this moment. Go okay. sign your name on the wall. Thank you so much, Big Randy.